What the Tech is sponsored by Audible.com, the internet's leading provider of audiobooks with more than 100,000 downloadable titles across all types of literature. For a free audiobook of your choice, go to audiblepodcast.com slash Andrew. What the Tech Hey everybody, welcome to What the Tech, a special drinking show, a uh, drinking episode of What the Tech. I'm Andrew Zarin. Of course, I'm joined by Paul Thoride, as I am each and every week. How are you doing, Paul? Hey, good. I'm busy checking in a beer on, what's this thing called? Unta- uh, untapped. untapped. Are, you, are you doing it on your Windows phone? <laughs> yes, I am. I didn't know that that app was on Windows phone. I People are often surprised when apps are on Windows <laughs> phone, but uh, <laughs> it is. We're winding down the uh, the year. Uh, this is the time of the year that we do some of these specialty shows. We're going to be doing a drinking show this week. Next week, we will be taking phone calls. We will be live on the air, and you guys are going to be calling in next week. We're going to have a special number. We'll announce the number prior to the show, and uh, we'll be taking phone calls throughout the entire show, and we'll be talking to the audience next week. So we'll be doing that. The following week, I believe, is the 24th, so I'm guessing there's no show that week. Right, Paul? Oh, the 24th? Yeah. Is there a show on the 24th? Um, I don't care if we do a Christmas show. is what? The 25th? Yeah. 3 o'clock. Yeah. Yeah, we could do, do one. one. Okay, so we'll do one. We'll you know, do like, We don't have to. I don't care. I mean, yeah, we could do one. And then uh, we'll do, I guess, the best of and then the worst of on the, on the 31st. So okay. the next couple of weeks, it's going to be uh, a lot of fun. We're going to have a lot of fun the next couple of weeks. Paul, uh, what are you drinking today? So I'm having like a spiked tea. I'm not feeling oh, too great. I went skiing over the weekend. I, I, my allergies are all over the place I today. I fear for your soul, Andrew. I know. Did, did you get worried when I left? When I went skiing? Oh, actually, no. Although I, I saw some photos from it and um, it looked like you were doing okay. Yeah, it was fine. I just rarely leave my little house. Yeah. You know, I don't go anywhere. I don't like to. So I'm having a spiked tea. Uh, I'm keeping it simple. What are you having? Right. I'm having Le Chouf in a Chimay glass. Oh, it's very nice. Hold it up. Let me see. Almost the perfect Belgian. It's like... Um, oh, that's pretty. Yeah. It's a nice color. It's brewed with spices. How are the aromas, Paul? <laughs> They're gnomish. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to be drinking uh, and having a good time today. Uh, before we go on with... Uh, what we have planned, Paul, I want to do our audible pick because okay, we sometimes get you know into the topic, we start talking, and it's like 45 minutes in, and I'm like, oh my God, we didn't talk about audible. So why don't we do our right. audible pick of the week this week? And guys, you know, you could sign up for audible too. They have a great deal for our audience. If you go to audiblepodcast.com slash Andrew, that's audiblepodcast.com slash Andrew. I've been, I've been saying it should be what the tech. I don't know why it's still Andrew. I got to tell them to change that. It's not about <laughs> me, Paul. It's also about you. You get a free audio book. Uh, and this week, Paul, what do you have for us? Oh, man. So, <laughs> excuse me. Audible had a sale recently, like kind of a Black Friday type sale. So I bought a bunch of stuff. I bought, and I, I've actually, I listened to more Audible this year than I think I ever have. I mean, possibly more this year than every other year combined. But um, the one thing I learned this year walking around listening, listening a lot uh, to a lot of Audible books is that I prefer the shorter ones, you know? Um, some of the really long ones I've gotten, like um, that last Stephen King book. Uh, it was like, it was like 32 hours. It felt like an eternity. Yeah. You know, it was just too much. And um, some of them, you know, I guess it depends on the book. I'm kind of going back and looking to see. Actually, The Shining was only, <laughs> it was only 16 hours long. It's funny because Doctor Sleep, which is the sequel to The Shining, is 18 and a half hours long. And I like that book uh, quite a bit more than The, uh, than the Shining. But whatever. So among the many books that I bought uh, recently, uh, most of them are actually pretty short. You know, five, seven, eight, somewhere in there. Even some of them are even shorter. Um, but the one I'm recommending this week, why can I not find it? Oh, I'm on the wrong page. Um, is uh, Logan's Run, right? Which um, only recently, I think, re- fairly recently, became available on Audible. And I just rewatched the movie, right? The 1970, I think it was 1978 movie with yeah. Michael York. Yeah. And uh, it's such an, it's so awesome. And it's so, so from the seventies, but 
Um, you know, this kind of like biblical parallels and all that kind of stuff. But it's, it's nice and short. It's like five and a half hours long. Um, it's a great story. I love, I love the post-apocalyptic. My stuff, father so. loves this movie, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, who, yeah, who doesn't? I mean, it's just so kitschy and excellent. I remember as a remake. kid. As a kid, my father would would like a Saturday afternoon with a couple beers in him and go, Andrew, listen, we're watching Logan run. Yeah. And I know I I never understood why he was running. If you look at the uh, Logan's Run logo on the book cover, which is like the same they would have used for the movie poster. Yeah, it's the probably. same thing. I think. Yeah. It looks like it's, isn't that the same font they used for Battlestar Galactica, like the TV series? It looks like it's the same. Was it? It, it, it looks really close. Doesn't it look really similar? Yeah. Now I got to look that up. I know. It was, unfortunately, because of the newer show, like a lot of that stuff uh, is it's the hard. old, is the new stuff. Yeah. Classic. It's a good pick, though. Yeah. You know, a, I, may, I may get this from my dad. My father, I got my dad into Audible recently. Uh, I got him an iPhone, and you know, I'm trying to get him up to speed with this stuff. And he likes reading, but his his vision's starting to go. So I'm starting to get him some audio books, and he's liking yep. it. He just sits there at night, and he goes to sleep to it. I, I think I'm going to get this one for him. I think he'll enjoy it. Good pick, Paul. Good pick. AudiblePodcast.com slash Andrew. Uh, get your free audio book there and uh, support the show. And they're good. They're good to us. Audible's a good company. I really, I really like them. So, Paul, uh, lots going on. You've been all over the tech news over the yeah. last couple of days. I've been getting emails from people thinking, like, I know something that yeah. you may have told me. Like, you're holding back from people. And, like, you come I to me and you're back. like, you go, hey, Andrew, listen, uh, don't tell anyone this, but this is going to happen. So I'll get these emails from people asking right. me, like, hey, listen, what else does Paul know? And yeah, I'm yeah, like, what does he say? What does Paul say in private? What does Paul t- I'm like, you don't want to know what Paul says in private. There's a little bit more. I mean, I, I, I try to throw these little uh, things in, you know, and it's funny because a lot of the stuff is up in the air. I mean, I think one thing, you know, I got <laughs> people are so terrible. I mean, um, I had written about Microsoft's current plans, which, you know, evolve, obviously, but they're looking at putting the uh, start menu back in Windows, uh, probably as an option, possibly only on the versions that may have a desktop or whatever. Um, I think that's a great idea. I do, too. I really do. Yeah. And of course, uh, and I had heard about this one earlier and now from two uh, different people, their plans to uh, allow Metro apps, like those mobile apps that run in Windows 8 and RT, to run in, in floating windows on the desktop so you can run them <laughs> side by side, you know, whatever. I'm laughing because like, <laughs> we, we said this two years ago. I know, I know. You said, wouldn't it be great if Metro could run yep. somewhat side by side in desktop somehow? Yeah. They, they always have reasons why these things can't happen and all that, but whatever. You know, the, the, the fundamental, well, let me get, I'm sorry, let me get back to the original point, which is just that, you know, someone, you know, you always get these guys in comments and some guys said some kind of crude version of, you know, well, I guess all those uh, pundits that were talking about the desktop going away can, are going to have to take back that, you know, whatever. And, you know, honestly, that's not, these things are not mutually exclusive. You know, Mary Jo Foley had a story on the same day about uh, the possible SKUs, the product versions that Microsoft's going to release for the next version of Windows. And it looks like one of them is sort of a combination of Windows RT and Windows Phone, which is another one of those rumors we had heard of, and that that version probably will not have a desktop. And so I think we're going to see Microsoft more closely targeting the different types of devices, or if you want to call them customer types or whatever that they have, and that there'll be different versions of Windows for each uh, audience type. You know. So and- here, here's, here's what, I'm, what I see from this. Mm-hmm. And, and like you said, a lot of people are going to come up and say, look, at Microsoft backpedaling again, they did the same thing with the Xbox. No, this is a company yes. that, for yep. whatever reason, in recent times now, is listening to its user base. Oh, I, by the way, I think I can explain the reason. Okay. Um, you know, well, two, it's twofold. One is that, obviously, things are changing. You know, people are going increasingly to other simpler devices than PCs, right? Um, tablets and smartphones primarily, of course often not running Windows, which is a huge problem for Microsoft. And so, the, you know, the Windows 8 existed for a reason. They needed to address that, and they needed to do it quickly. But, of course, the, the dark side of Windows 8 is that it kind of screwed over all of the desktop customers, over a billion of them, possibly as many as 1.5 billion of them, um, who felt that Windows 8 did not address their needs adequately. Their complaint. But the, the team at Microsoft that did Windows 8 was, of course, the Sanofsky team. And we'll ne- we may never know the exact details of how it happened, but it, it suffice to say, but we do know as a fact that his departure last November was sudden and unexpected by everyone. That it, 
people who knew him closely went into work one day and discovered he was gone. And it was a shock to them. And so something bad happened. We but can has sort of, his mindset, the, 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 his team's mindset kind of gone away at this point? His yeah, way well, of doing things point, is totally so erased. Right. So that's sort of where I was heading. Um, when that happened, Microsoft put two women, uh, Julie Larson Green and Tammy Reller, uh, one of whom, uh, Larson Green, is a very close uh, confidant, lieutenant of Stephen Sanofsky, in charge of um, uh, two people to kind of take over his uh, responsibilities. Hold on, you, now, broke, you broke up as you were saying the second name. Tammy Reller. Okay, there you go. These are both very competent people and all that, but the 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 point at that time was, well, clearly they're going forward with whatever their um, strategy was. And, and, and by the way, it's fair to say that these people were responsible for Windows 8.1. And I, I consider Windows 8.1 to be a, a big success in the sense that it addressed many and maybe even most of the big issues that people had with Windows 8. And so I think it's, we, we need to say that. It's fair to say that. But what's happened since then is that Microsoft has reorganized. Those people are no longer part of Windows. Uh, Julie Larson Green is running the devices business at Microsoft and also the games business, which is kind of interesting. Um, although that may change with Stephen Elop coming over from uh, Nokia. So apparently he's going to be running that when he arrives. And Tammy Reller is in charge of all of Microsoft's marketing. And so they're both out of Windows. And what used to be Windows is now an OS group, and it's run by Terry Myerson. And this is the guy who previously actually orchestrated kind of a palace coup, if you will, and took over the Windows Phone division. Um, I just forgot the guy's name who was there previously. He was a dry as a stick, but whatever. He's been running Windows Phone. Now, now that Myerson is running win Windows or all OS development, all of a sudden everything's changing. And one of those things we've seen over the past several months is all of those key Sanofsky people are gone. And they're all leaving. Antoine LeBlanc. Um, most recently, uh, you know, John, uh, okay, I'm forgetting her all the John Devon, um, uh, Jensen Harris this week. For example, the guy in charge of the user experience, Windows 8, you know, gone. And I think this is the, this is the change. We've got a completely new group in charge of Windows. Um, completely different goals, completely different strategy. And they're going to do th such things as bring Windows Phone and Windows 8 together. Remember that when Sinovsky started Windows 8, he had all the user experience stuff on Windows Phone. The Metro stuff was all being implemented. They went and got all of the documentation for everything that was happening. The Windows Phone guys at the time expected they'd be working closely together. The Windows team went off and did their own thing. And so you have these weird inconsistencies between the different implementations of this user experience. And so one of the goals that Myerson has right now as the person in charge of all of their OS development is to bring together the user experiences on Windows, on Windows Phone, and on Xbox One so that these things are as close to each other as they can be, you know, within the confines of each uh, system. So this is the reason for the change. It's a completely new group. And now we're really seeing it because those key guys that were in uh, the guy, you know, the guy in charge of Windows Store, the guy in charge of the user experience, the guy in charge of Internet Explorer, they're all gone. They've all they've all been I don't want to say pushed out, but they're this is what happens. It's, you know, it's like when a new president comes in, they have a new cabinet, they have. Uh, you know, they bring in their own people, and that's what he's doing. I mean, some of the some of these moves makes total sense. The the fact that you know they have this one unified platform, and I understand that, and I think that's a great step for them. And and that's they're pretty much in vision with the next version of Windows is that it's this unified platform across you know the Xbox, the phone, the tablets, uh, desktop. But it's going to have to be different throughout all of them. Tablets, yeah, to me, always be different. I mean, right now, pretty much a Windows tablet is the same as a Windows desktop. It's just without a well, keyboard. I mean, the fundamental function of the thing is the, the same exact thing. The thing is, if you think about it, a Windows tablet should be more like a Windows phone, shouldn't it? Absolutely. Right? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the system that shouldn't have the desktop. That's the system that should be all touch-based. And so you can see in Windows 8.1, they, they move closer to that ideal. They obviously need things like Office to be in the touch environment and so forth. 8.2, I'm thinking of, I've never, no one at Microsoft has ever called it this, but I think of this next release as 8.2, if you will. Although... I should also point out that things need to happen before this. There are going to be, uh, the Windows Phone 8.1 release has not come out yet. Uh, there's going to be updates to Windows 8.1 that we really haven't talked too much about yet. Um, things will happen first. But let's say this time next year, we should have 8.2. I'm, I'm not suggesting Xbox One, Windows Phone, RT, Windows, whatever, are all going to be identical. 
But I think the point is to bring them as uh, close as possible to each other, where it makes sense, you know, where it makes sense. So are they looking to, because of all the skews that uh, Mary Jo Foley was talking about, are they looking to kind of have this, if it's a tablet, it's going to be more centered around Metro, but if you want to get into desktop, you can, and on the desktop, it's going to be more centered around desktop, but if you want to get into Metro, you can. Yeah. Is it going I mean, to be I kind can of... Only, I, all I can do is tell you what she wrote, because this is something I've not heard about independently, and, and the way that... She put it was, I think it was three SKUs. On the high end, you have kind of an enterprise SKU. It's going to be pure business oriented, mostly desktop, that kind of thing. Uh, and, and then there'll be two consumer SKUs. And one's going to be the tablet SKU. And one will be the kind of hybrid SKU, you know, desktop plus tablet. Yeah. Um, and that thing that's in the middle, that desktop plus hybrid, that's today, that's Windows, right? That's what we have um, currently. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, a lot, you know, it's funny for all of the complaining on the desktop side, and it is a huge audience, and it's something that we, they, they, their concerns need to be addressed because for Windows, they are the majority by far. Um, there's another side of that argument, which is that Windows 8 today or Windows RT or whatever isn't completely acceptable as a tablet OS because the desktop is in the way, right? You know, and I knew that I, in writing a book about Windows 8.1, you know, I find that there are certain, and in fact, there are many of them once you really dig into it, certain file operations, things you might do to files, even something as simple as getting the properties on a folder full of files or something like that, uh, that are not possible, or in some cases, it's not easy to do on the Metro side. You know, there's, there's this stuff that you always have to go to the desktop for. And so I think this evolution away from that takes place over a number of versions. But I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised. You know, 8.2, if we see, you know, it's what Windows Phone is. I mean, essentially, like I mean, a listen, desktop. listen, as, as more people go towards a tablet-style device, yeah, desktop is not going to be this, this big deal for them. But right now, I mean, for me especially, I'm using desktop uh, laptops, and I have, I have laptops and I have desktop PCs here. I don't have eight on any of them because I just, for me, there's no, first of all, it's useless for me to upgrade, but I just don't feel comfortable with Metro. It feel, to me, it feels like it's in the way of things. And I think a lot of other people feel that way. But if we're talking about enterprise, enterprise was not, wants nothing to do with that stuff. No, they really don't. They you really, know, so uh, yeah, literally. to me, it, 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 it's, I think you said it once. It's, it's like the operating system came out before, you know, people caught on to it. I mean, this thing is five years ahead of its time. I, I, I do give them some credit for, you know, kind of pushing it through. The, the only problem was they, they pushed it through to this product that people use on traditional devices that have no touch capabilities, you know, um, those people were understandably upset about this. A lot of them. And by the way, you know, when you consider that there are 1.5 billion windows users, it's highly likely that over a billion people were very unhappy about this. And, you know, I see this all the time, you know, and you may, I think you made the comment too. people were saying, this is just like the Xbox one. You know, the whiners are getting their way. I, I was upset about the Xbox One stuff because I felt like the complaints were coming from a crowd that was never going to buy this console anyway. And that they were having some design influence on a system that was fine the way it was. Um, and it, I felt that Microsoft wrongly backpedaled on that stuff. I do also feel that during the lifetime of the console, they're going to fix that. But, okay. So they, they it, it's always, you know, the the... The guys show up with the torches at the castle and you, uh, you know, <laughs> you give up. Okay, yeah. Fine. But, you know, Windows is a little different, you know, and you're getting that complaint. I'm getting that complaint from people. Oh, the whiners are going to, you know, they're, what's that? You know, Raphael, my uh, Windows uh, co-author, my Windows book co-author uh, joked on Twitter, like, what's, you know, what happens next? Are we going to bring back program manager, you know, from Windows 3.1? <laughs> um, I'm a big fan of net meeting, Paul. I would love <laughs> yeah. to see net meeting integrated. Right, again. right. I I'm still looking for Netscape to finish their that constellation desktop <laughs> yeah. that we're talking about. But you know what? Here's the harsh reality. Windows 8 was the first version of Windows ever where they changed major parts of the UI and didn't provide the old way as an option. It was the only time they've ever done it. And it was that was a big mistake. And so in 8.1, they took... I would say a half measure toward what many people were looking for. You know, they brought back the start button, but not the start menu. They provided the capability to boot right into the desktop. They got rid of most of Metro, but not all of it. You know, that kind of thing. If A2, I, I, don't, I don't need it myself. I don't want it. I don't care personally. 
but I at least have enough empathy, and I certainly get enough feedback from people that I know what's going on in the world, that I understand that if, if there are customers who are used to this, and they're, they're sticking now to Windows 7 and not going to 8 or 8.1 or whatever version, because of this, Microsoft would be insane not to give them this. And they should have done it in 8.0. And so this new crowd at Microsoft, new, the new OS group, is not backpedaling. They're not taking a step back. They're righting a wrong. They're doing something that should have been there from the get-go. It's not about stepping back from the start screen. The start screen's still moving forward. We're still going to, in fact, I know about improvements that are coming to the start screen that I've never written about, speaking of things you and I have never discussed. By the way, <laughs> I, I know all of this. Um, if you want, yeah, you can send yeah, yeah. me an email, and I'll fill um, you in on everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll fill you um, in about so the are, Apple yeah, merger. Are, that's not the point. The, 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 it's not about taking a step back. It's about doing what your customers want. You know, in this battle. And why is that a bad thing, Paul? Why, why do people look at that thing. as a negative? It, you know, the, it, it's, it's an not, open company. You know, times people, are different. Because people suck. I mean, we're and, talking about, you know, if we talk about Windows thing, 7, I, I though, Paul. Twitter. Hmm? If we talk about Windows 7, at the time of Windows 7, Twitter wasn't, the, the everyday person <laughs> wasn't going on Twitter and bashing this product. Look, this stuff, it doesn't matter what year we're talking about. You know, these the, the, the facilities for people to complain are only going to get better and better. I mean, eventually, uh, people are going to be able to call my phone and leave a message for me and tell me what a douche I am or whatever. And that, you know, this will be, and we'll be saying, you know, back when Windows 8 was around, people couldn't call me at home. You know? No, but I mean, whatever. my point is. It doesn't is matter. People are, I, I, I wrote on Twitter today something to the effect of, you know, you can't complain that Windows 8 is broken and doesn't meet any of your demands and then complain that they're now backpedaling. You know, like you don't get to do that. Like, I, I, it's amazing. You know, I'm not, I'm not this pedantic. I'm not going to go look up these people and say, see like all these guys, you know, oh my God, I can't believe they're taking a step back and then go back and find out that they were the ones complaining about Windows 8. But you kind of know there's a lot of crossover there. And it's like, guys, you know, the internet doesn't have to be a toilet bowl. We don't have to just complain all the time. I mean, I, I think... This is just positive. This is fine. It doesn't ruin any uh, of their. They're still going to combine Windows Phone and Windows RT into some mobile platform for the future. They're still. They are still advancing the start screen. They are still advancing Metro. I mean, one of the first things I said about uh, Windows 8, in fact, was we're talking about how immature the Metro environment is and how easy it is to fix that. But what about the desktop? Why can't the desktop evolve to meet this future? Why can't we have Win32 advancements that allow for full screen applications that run sort of like Metro apps and can run side by side with Metro apps? Like, why can't the other side of the equation improve as well? And so I think with this new crowd, we're seeing less of a, I don't know, you know, kind of a one-sided view that, you know, the, I think I called it my way or the highway kind of thing, um, where they're... Uh, you know, opening up to feedback. I mean, these, the last look, I mean, they did some stuff right. I mean, I want to be clear about that. But the Sanofsky regime, the, the crowd that they had in there, they loved to talk about feedback. They could not give a shit about feedback ever. And th that stuff was so transparently wrong. But it was Every evident. Time, you know, I mean, people saw oh, that. It was, just, it was like, guys, if you actually cared about what people thought, Windows 8 would never have happened. Never have happened. Yeah. You just jammed that down people's throats. And, um, you know, it's it maybe in retrospect, it shouldn't have been surprising that people were upset about that, right? I, and again, I want to be clear. It's, it, it, it's hard when you get through this kind of stuff because, you know, people are like, oh, Paul's really changed his mind on Windows 8. No, no, no. no. I'm, I'm, I'm addressing the world here. I mean, for myself, I, I, I have always understood why they did what they did with Windows 8. I thought it was a little too radical. I've been using Windows 8 forever, Windows 8 one, whatever. On a, on a desktop machine that has no touch, whatever. It's fine. I think it's fine. But, you know, everyone isn't me. Everyone doesn't have my daily exposure to this kind of stuff. And I have normal uh, friends, well, <laughs> I should say non-technical friends. Who, normal. Normal, yeah. yeah. Normal. Not, trust me, none of these people are normal. <laughs> but um, who have, on their own, said to me separately, you know, I got a new Windows 8 PC, What's going on here? Or I don't understand. Why did they? What is this? Like, why would they do this? Like, this is not, you know, it's not, this is not some weird evolution. This is like something different. Like, why did they do this? Like, they're confused by it. And um, you can't ignore that kind of thing. Like, so even if I understand it myself, even if I'm okay with it, 
I can't ignore the fact that I think a very large percentage of the computing population is not okay with it. I also I think, think it's quite myself- hard. I mean, when you have, I mean, 90%, uh, 95% of the, the PC market, you know, it's it's pretty hard to have this drastic change. Everything is an evolution, and that's what people expect. And that's kind of what people want. They want slow changes so they could kind of adapt to it. When you throw this brand new thing, like, boom, this is Windows, it kind of holds people back, and they don't know what to do. Yeah, I feel like that, yeah. that happened to a lot of people. Now, now, Paul, do you think we're... I mean, right now, from it's still really early, but... Are they looking to have this as an A2, or are they looking for this to be, you know, a major release? So I've had to <coughs> kind of extrapolate into this because the people I've talked to have never used the the word threshold, which Mary Jo is using as the the name for this next release. Um, they've referred to it only as, you know, the, the guys in Windows. Uh, they tend to think of this, and of course, it's not even called Windows anymore. The guys in the OS group, I guess, they they tend to think of it as, you know, V next or the next version of Windows, you know, that kind of thing. They don't, early on, they don't really give it number, you know, that, that kind of thing. Um, I think Threshold is the name, a, a kind of an Uber name, you know, um, for a wave of re- updates that will bring these products closer together. I don't think Threshold is the name of Windows 8.2. You know, I, I, so it's kind of a pedantic point. It doesn't really matter. But um, yes, I do think that in bringing together what I've heard from my own sources and what Mary Jo is telling me about what her sources have said, um, I think that this is 8.2 stuff. And so what I think we're going to see over the next year is uh, first Windows Phone 8.1 and, and, and something that I think is called Update 1 for Windows 8.1, what we might have called the service pack in the future. Possibly an Update 2 as well over the summer, whatever. Uh, and then an 8.2 release. Um, and I'm just talking Windows. I mean, I don't know. Windows Phone I've not heard. I don't know if there's going to be a Windows Phone 8.2 at the same time. I would assume because the OS uh, development is now consolidated that those things will be updated in lockstep going forward, but we'll see. Um, I think... I'm going to be careful. I'm not sure if this was published yet. but I, uh, Yeah, I think there's been some information about um, Myerson possibly de, um, uh, removing the connection between the release cycle for server and client. And that client needs to be on its own uh, schedule. And that's something I've often wondered about. You know, when you think about the different SKUs for Windows, the different versions, you know, why does the consumer version of Windows even have to look like the business version, right? I mean, if, as long as they run the same apps and everything, like these th- and, and uh, are sitting on the same core, have the same driver model, whatever, you know, why can't these things, you know, just be different? And, and it seems like they're kind of heading in this. Uh, general direction i mean i could see i could see a couple of things like i could see them saying okay well we gotta we gotta keep the people that use desktop happy because development for you know the metro has not been what we want it to be and i think that well, plays a they're, huge part they're striking in out on all fronts though yeah they? i mean like so obviously um when you start from a very small place uh you can see improvement and we, we have seen improvement in the metro app selection it took Windows Phone years. I think I think we're at a, a pretty good place right now. Um, when you see things like Instagram and Vine appear, it's good. Mint, all that kind of stuff. It's been a good year for Windows Phone from an app's perspective. It's been a good year for Windows Phone, period. Um, but that took three years, you know. Uh, Windows, bigger audience, it should, you know, it's, it, it's a little more alarming that that hasn't happened. The problem for Microsoft is that this trend is something that's been going on for a while. Uh, we've talked a lot about how there haven't been any major Win32 application development uh, occurring since iTunes. I mean, yeah. it's been a long time. Um, so there are big apps on Win32. And then there are these apps that people think are big, but aren't really that big. Photoshop, Visual Studio, whatever, that are important for those markets, but they're they're not even in the top 10, you know, as far as like actual usage and installs and all that kind of stuff. And it's funny, by the way, you know, um, uh, making a uh, lot, uh, bringing back the start menu and, uh, letting, um, Metro apps run in floating windows on top of the desktops. Um, there are third party tools right now that are among the top 10, um, <laughs> applications on the windows desktop right now. So, Clearly, people want this stuff. So with them bringing back the start menu, is it going to be the start menu that we know of, or is it going to be some sort of new so, hybrid? 
Yeah, it's I, I don't have a lot of details on that. I, I, I've heard this from two different places. Um, one of them was very clear it's happening. The other one said it's still under consideration. One of them said that it was, yes, the goal was to bring, you know, Windows 7 start menu. The other one was like, uh, you know, we don't know. If, if you're familiar with some of the third-party utilities out there, I think it's called, um, I'm trying to remember which Start 8. Yeah, the, whichever the, um, well, the Stardock one. Is that Start 8? Yeah, that's that Start 8, yeah. So one of the options you get in this utility, which I think is really cool, is that you, you can bring up a th- like a Windows 7 style start menu, but you can also bring up a Windows 8 style start menu. So it's sort of like the start screen, but it's in a floating window. And I think that's kind of interesting because it gives you the ability to have that metro experience and get used to it a little bit, but within the confines of the desktop, which you may prefer. So um, this is so the uh, 7 style, I think. It's a 7 style, yeah. yeah. So we'll see. Yeah, I, 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 like I said, you know, uh, this is one of those don't shoot the messenger things. Like, all I can tell you is what I've heard. I wouldn't tell you it if I hadn't heard it from people who were very trusted and have been dead on in the past and uh, I know well, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, that's the only reason I would ever even discuss it publicly. Um, but things change. I mean, you know, just, sometimes you implement something in a beta version of something. You're like, yeah, this doesn't really work out. Um, you know, start... Um, Start screen and tile sync in Windows 8.1 is one of those things where they this people were asking for this. And they put it in 8.1 and in the I think in the consumer preview it was implemented by default. And it just messes everything up. As it turns out, people want different layouts and things, different apps installed on different uh, devices. That makes sense, right? A, an 8-inch device isn't a 27-inch desktop device. And so uh, it's still there in 8.1, but it's off by default. And so sometimes just getting things in front of people changes it. And so we'll see. But... Um, I know what's going to happen is that, you know, this won't be exactly what I said. And people go, oh, sorry, you know, you made it up again. And it's not like that. It, it's, it's I, you know, I, I can just, <laughs> all I can do is say what I've heard. And, and um, it's not about me being right or wrong. It's just, um, I don't want people to give up hope because I think a lot of people still look at 8.1 and think, eh, you know, it doesn't go far enough. I'm going to stick with Windows 7 for a while. We'll see how it goes. And, you know, the fear from Microsoft's perspective is that those people will stick on Windows 7 forever. Like they did yeah. with XP. They'll never buy new PCs. I mean, there's still uh, people sticking to XP, and I find that unbelievable. Yeah. I'm yeah, amazed yeah, yeah. by that when I hear people that they're sticking with XP. When 7's available, why, I mean, why Why would you stay so, with XP? But I have a, 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 I would say in this case, it's fair to say kind of a biased viewpoint on this because I'm kind of immersed in technology like you are and like a lot of people listening to this are. And I hear people are sticking with XP, and I think, oh, man, that's a... It's a curious choice. But, you know, it's, it shouldn't be a luxury to treat a computer like a tool, uh, a means to an end, not an end. And for those people, maybe XP works and it gets them where they want to go. And I can't, I don't want to judge those people. But, yeah, I, I, I mean, I go, to, I go back to XP and I, I, I step through the install process, for example, which is classic uh, compared to the way Windows 8 works today. And it's like, ugh, you know, this is gross, <laughs> old fashioned and terrible. Yeah. yeah. You know, it was wonderful at the time, you know. Um, I had a question for you, actually. Um, yeah. Something that Apple does, which is pretty cool, is that let's say you put in a new hard drive on your Mac. Something mm-hmm. happens and you blow everything away and you have no OS on there. The yeah. firmware will ping the Apple servers and it'll download the latest version of OS X. Wow. Oh. Can you see Microsoft offering something like that where if they don't detect an operating system, it's, you know, kind of says like, hey, yeah. do you want to download yeah, yeah, yeah. it? If it kind of detects that you already have it, so it could go based on what you had already, and Let it just downloads it from the question. cloud. Yes. Could I see Microsoft taking a, a really good feature that Apple implemented first and adding it to Windows? Yes. <laughs> yes, I could. Uh, allow me to cite the 117 other times I've done that. Of course. Uh, I mean, yes. I, that's one of the most useful features that nobody ever talks about on the Mac right. side. I had no idea that it existed I'm not until. With that, but. Yeah, I blew everything away and I had to create like a like a little start yeah. disk. But if you boot into the BIOS, which is whatever they call it, uh, UF, uh, I forgot what UEFI, it is. Yeah. UEFI, yeah. But there's this like a little weird hybrid thing. Um, yep. It'll say like, "Hey, oh, it's, it's still UEFI, but yeah." Do yeah, you want to install Lion, or do you want to install whatever the computer came right. with? But now, I guess because the operating system is free, so whatever the latest version is, so that's what's available. I haven't bought a Mac in a while, and actually, I, I have bought Macs since this. But the, I bought a Core Two Duo Mac many years ago, so this is, you, know, you can tell it's four generations old or whatever. But 
it came with this tiny little USB stick that you could, you know, install the OS on. And it was probably, I'm sure the OS that's on there is some three, four years old version, whatever. Um, even th that kind of thing is kind of a nicety when you think about it. You know, the, like computers used to come with all this stuff, you know, w Windows has a recovery partition and... Yeah, but what happens if your hard drive goes away? Exactly. So, I, you know, one of the pieces of advice I could give to people that run Windows is that you need to make a recovery disk. In fact, I uh, just made one for a friend. I, I needed this at uh, Build when, when I uh, tried to upgrade to the consumer preview version of Windows RT 8.1. I bricked the system. So Mary Jo was around. She had her Windows RT tablet. And I said, can I borrow that for a minute and make recovery media and I was able to resuscitate the machine? Um, but yeah, that's, yes, that, that's a problem. I'm yeah, sure. I mean, it, it, think about it, though. Most, most of these Ultrabooks don't have a CD drive, so you can't yep. boot into a CD. You had to have created a bootable USB drive, but most people but don't. But if that drive fails. Yeah, if they drive fails or most people don't or you lost it, what are you going to do? you got to run around trying well, to figure out what you're going to do. Yeah. You know, depending on the failure you have, I mean, the, the way that PCs are going these days is that, you know, you don't, we think, we still think of it as a hard drive, but a lot of times what's in there is just some form of solid state memory. It's not even an SSD. It's like EMC or whatever, whatever you call that stuff. This, it's just solid state storage. Like a Mac has some bank of storage in it, uh, like a MacBook Air. It's not like a, a drive you can pull out and sure, put your yeah. own thing in. It's, it's completely different. And so um, when you have these kind of closed systems, you can't replace the battery. There's no real expansion there. Um, their design, uh, it, this is not, you know, the notion of replacing like an SSD even or a hard drive. Is, I mean, that's going away. Nobody's is antiquated, yeah. right? Isn't it? I mean, um, these things are designed in a way that uh, look kind of like TVs are any other electronics. It's just replace it, <laughs> you know, and, and, and I think the nice thing and, and Windows has this to an extent. Windows does have this. It, it's not super sophisticated, but it's there where you can. In Windows 8.1, uh, install on a new machine. You can restore from a backup. You, so you can get all your application links back. Not Office and the desktop stuff because that's old-fashioned, but the new stuff. You can use SkyDrive. And if you've been you know, uh, saving all your documents and all your other files to SkyDrive, as you should, as I really feel you should, that stuff all happens automatically. And so the, the process of waking up one day and your computer doesn't work and then you have to get a new one maybe or get it fixed, whatever it is, and then recovering is a million times better than it was with Windows XP or Windows Vista or even Windows 7. I mean, it's, it's really gotten a lot better. So it's, it's not magic yet, but it's, uh, you know, it's kind of heading there. I'm hoping with the next version of Windows 2, they kind of emphasize some of these changes that they've done on the desktop side. I know that, um, you know, like coding, you know, like in the back end stuff, like I know that there was d some changes done to direct show, and I know there was some changes done to the way that it, it just the small little things, but in the for someone like me, like that's a big deal because we do vi video stuff, we do video production, so that would affect me. But Microsoft did not discuss any of that. I mean, I feel like when they released Windows 8.1, it was like, here's the new Windows, and that's it. I kind of want the Apple 250 <laughs> changes, you know, parts list. Yeah. I kind of want that. <laughs> You want the Apple thing where they say, you know, with 400 new features. And, 400 new uh, features and then list every one single one. One of them is a one. font and the other, you know, <laughs> we added the other one is a minor fonts. UX change to a dialog box, you know. Yeah. yeah, like I want that. I want to see that. I guess nobody else does. It's fair to say that Microsoft does not do a good job of marketing, I think would be the way to put that. So, yeah. So what does this mean for um, RT? Are they still planning to continue this or... As far as, so, you know, in again, its, in its this current... This is not something I've heard directly, but um, it seems like what they're doing is combining Windows Phone and RT into a single platform, which I think makes plenty that of sense. That makes so much more sense. Yeah. Yeah, because it, it's weird. Like, you're seeing some of these, like, six-inch... You know, you see a six-inch Windows Phone, and then you see a seven-inch Windows tablet, and really, it should all be the same UI. I mean, I would love a tablet. I would love a eight inch tablet with the Windows Phone UI. Yeah, I would love. I mean, that. actually, right. So this um, Lumia fifteen twenty, which is 
I think too big as a phone. It's kind of neat as a tablet, right? I mean, it doesn't have uh, Xbox video yet, and that will come. But, you know, if you like to play games, awesome. If you like to read, whether it's like a news app or a Kindle app, whatever, obviously the size is advantageous. Windows Phone has always done an amazing job of scaling, uh, and, and it's, it's scaling everything. The text, which is beautiful at different sizes, but just the UI of an app, you know, you can load it on different... Uh, Screen sizes, resolutions, aspect ratios, whatever, and, and the apps tend to kind of just pour themselves into the space and look beautiful. So it's, um, yeah, it's a great, it's, it's going to be great for, t- I've always wanted Windows, Windows Phone on a tablet, so. Hopefully it'll come. Yeah. I'm hoping. Uh, Paul, yeah. I want to uh, jump to Android for a second. Mm-hmm. I want to tell you what I did last week. So last week I was ranting and raving about this phone, oh. uh, I ha- about the camera and about all these things that were bothering me with the phone i have actually i used it a lot over the weekend because i went away and i didn't bring a laptop or anything and i have to tell you i really like the phone uh, but i'm still a little upset about the camera but last tuesday after we got off the air i was a little upset and had a little to drink and i started to find roms to put on this phone you have way too much free time oh god way too much free time you don't even know (laughs) <laughs> and I um, I wiped the entire phone. And I totally bricked it. I uh, I like I wiped out the entire OS. Nothing, nothing was left. Okay. So a friend of mine, Brian, uh, he's probably in the Brian uh, is in the room. Uh, not Brian Monroe, the other Brian. Uh, he he helped me out pretty much. He found like the LG, you know what they use at LG to kind of recover these things, and we found the the ROM, and we had to unroot it. We went through the entire process. Took like. Two, three Unrooted. hours. Unrooted. Yeah, because it was that's rooted. A, that's a very interesting term. Unroot. Unrooted. Unrooted. Or unroot okay. it. I don't know. Derooted. Derooted. <laughs> you know, it's funny because on the phone it says unrooted on my phone. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm sure, de- I'm sure you're correct. So I, we went through that entire way, process. I, I, so, yeah. I, you, the Nexus 5 got a camera update, apparently. It did. Did you notice I don't any? Have it. You don't have it. Oh, wait a minute. I know how you could get the update. Oh, tell me. Oh, let's. I'll tell you right now. Hold on. Because <laughs> I would like to try it. Uh, I've heard it makes a big difference. Yeah, I'll tell you right now. Someone posted this. I saw it on Facebook. So let me see. Uh, because honestly, uh, the I mean, well, the only major issue I have with this phone is the quality. The camera is just, eh, you know, it's it's not horrible. It's it's kind of middling or whatever. But it's it's not. It's certainly it's not great. But I heard this update makes a big difference. I'm trying to find this here. Let's see if I can find. It. I didn't. I, I thought. I assumed it was sort of a something that would just happen. No, no, no. You gotta like do so some silly. weird stuff. <laughs> yeah, you're believing so that that would ever happen. I mean, that's that's great. Okay, so this is how you get get it. Okay, go to settings, yep. apps, all. Yeah. Good services framework. <laughs> okay, hold on one second. Sorry, I thought. All right, so settings. Okay, settings, apps, all. Actually, that's not what I thought. Hold on. Apps. What do you mean all? And then there's like all show all apps. Oh, yep. Okay. okay. And then you see good services framework. Mm, 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 mm. Are these alphabetical? Yeah. Okay. I do not. It has to be there. According to this, it has to be there. Uh, nope. Okay. And someone's right, saying look, not look, rec- I, now that I know it's not just going to yeah. come automatically. I'll look. I'll look around. I'll, I'll, someone is I'll saying uh, not recommended to do. Did you try to push the update yourself? No. Oh, no, I, I I thought it was an update. Like I. Oh no no look, no no! no. I, I'm not, you I'm not, have I'm to. Sorry. You I mean, have let me, to push let me it. back step. I am not firmly enmeshed in the <laughs> Android world or anything. I I heard about this. I heard it made a big improvement. I read something about it. I thought it was going to come as an update to the phone. I thought Google did this. You're it's, saying that this is this is like some kind of a uh, it's it's Google services framework, but but don't do that right now. Just just go to your updates. Just go to did, it's, uh, not, it's not. Did you try to push it? What does that mean? Like push the you like push. You mean like say update. I want it now. Yeah, like I want the update now. Like get a little no. pushy with it. Yeah, it doesn't. Don't worry about it. Tell your story. I'm sorry. Okay, I'll look this up. Don't okay, it's it. actually Google services framework. And then Google you got to clear it, but you got to clear. But this person is saying it's not recommended 
to stop it, but I'm don't stop it, clear it. Do you, do you but do you see the insanity here? Like do you see how this is <laughs> well, not but you happening? Know what, though, but but okay, I do. But on the flip side, the one thing I will say is I just mentioned there are like 1.5 billion people using Windows. I could see where Android is a comfortable place for these people, you know? Like a lot of those guys, they look at the Apple stuff and they're like, "Eh, geez, this is a little, you know, <laughs> a little controlled." I mean, I think a lot of people like that this is possible, even though most people would never do it. The fact that you could go into Google Services yeah. framework and stop it, yep. yeah. Yep. I mean, it's very much like Windows, right? It's, I mean, this is, is, this that's is... what I mean. In other words, you could go to Windows and you could download something that would ruin your computer. In fact, <laughs> people do this every day, and. I, I, it's like the it, it's it's like gun ownership or don't tread on me. It's that kind of thing. Like I need to have the ability to destroy my device. Like that's my right. You know that kind of thing. I think it's that it's that primal. I mean, I I, I, I really people, do think people respond to that kind. Of people thing. used to go and delete system files in Windows ninety five because they they thought they yep. just didn't want to do it. I work with a guy and he would do it at work all the time. It was a it was a Windows two thousand computer. So and he would people, just. Delete files. Yes. Sit there and, and they would, with some online guide or back in the day, a book, would navigate through the registry editor and make stupid little changes. And Oh, yeah. I still do that. <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, no, honestly, I still go I, and I no, turn I, off I, services I, I, and I, I like to it. do it. It's too bad. Macs just work. You, you can't even do that on a Mac. Right. I, I, yeah. So. It just it's works, Paul. Weird. Yeah, okay. But I, um, I I pretty much destroyed the entire thing, and I was like, oh, my God, I just got this phone, and now what am I going to do? I should just take a hammer to it. I'm better off just, like, breaking it uh, and just claiming just the insurance. It. Like, now I'm like, it oh, my God, bought. I got to do something. So he was able to actually recover everything from me. Look, GoDaddy's calling me. Huh. It's <laughs> funny. I will ignore you, GoDaddy. There you go. Um, but... I, I I mean I just almost destroyed the entire thing. I re reset up everything and I did the updates and now it's okay. But it's annoying that I have to go through and do something like that to kind of fix the camera. You know, like there's an obvious right. camera problem. I'm not going to see the changes because who knows when I'm getting the new version of Android, if ever. I mean, who, who knows? knows whether you're getting? <laughs> but could, new can you imagine? But this you know? and this is the pro, this is the difference between windows and between windows and and what android is doing i mean there's a lot of comparison there but with yeah. windows can you imagine you go and buy a brand new hp laptop and it came with windows 7 right now like a brand new one that just got released today came with windows 7 and you don't know if you could get windows 8 right well I, it may not ways, that's what that's windows rt isn't it i mean it's kind this of is the, yeah. I mean, this is the way of the world. You know, this is the way things are going. Uh, it, anyway, it's go on. Weird. Uh, explain. I'm sorry, but I, I, we're 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 getting off like the top. But I pretty much your story. Here. I pretty much destroyed the phone. and I had to bring it back, and I'm just sitting there. I'm like, why am I doing this? Is it that important that you know the the macro on this camera is at the level that I want it to be? I mean, why can't I just leave this alone? So I'm like battling myself now because I I. I still want to go and root this thing. <laughs> I still like I really still want to go and root it and put this new version on. And then I'm reading it and then there are like all these people having problems and they're like, yeah, the Wi-Fi turns off. But I'm justifying like, well, the, it's OK. If the Wi-Fi turns off. At least I could take a good picture with it. And it's crazy. So I totally gave up. I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm not going to root the thing. I'm going to leave it the way it is. And if I want to get another phone, I'll just go and buy another phone. I can't. This is insane. It's insane. Hmm. I mean, that, that's that's an argument for people, though, to it's buy too bad Android. You couldn't have got a Nexus 5. Yeah, well, because I'm on Verizon. You know? I mean, yeah, that's the problem. Nice yeah. 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 Uh, any news on Verizon and uh, Windows phones? What are they getting? Yeah, so uh, there's a, a device called the Lumia 929 that's going to be coming to Verizon soon. I, we, uh, many people expected it in November. Um, it's it's it seems like it's perfect in the sense that you know nothing is really perfect in the tech world, but uh, five inch screen, which I think is kind of the sweet spot for smartphones. Personally, it's going to have the same camera that's in the Lumia fifteen twenty. So this is the 
I think it's 20, I've forgotten already, 25 megapixels, somewhere in there. So it's not the 40 megapixel version from the 1020, but 20, 25-ish, I forget the exact resolution. Same exact camera. Um, that camera is phenomenal. And in my own tests, you know, depending on the photo, it, it in many ways actually outpaces the 1020 from a quality standpoint. So uh, that's a big deal. And so it, it's basically uh, a 1520, but the right size device, not this humongous kind of unwieldy six inch thing. Um, and the question is just a matter of timing, you know, when's it going to happen? But uh, I think it's going to be soon. I don't actually know. I mean, I don't, I don't have any inside info on that, but uh, it could be any time. So if you're on Verizon and you're, wondering about when his phone or want to upgrade to when you know some new version of his phone you gotta wait on this one this is this the 929 is gonna be a big deal why why are they so slow in adapting you know windows yeah. phones well i mean is there a reason why are they just i don't know i think just, verizon is very tight with motorola in particular and uh with the android world and obviously with iphone as well too um i don't know I, you know part of it is that for whatever reason and this ultimately means absolutely nothing, but when AT&T is the kind of premier partner for both Windows Phone and Nokia for whatever reason in the U.S., and um, they get a lot of stuff first. But if you're familiar with the, I think it's the Lumia 925, which is the T-Mobile device, the beautiful form factor, really thin, is like a tiny little camera bump. It's not a big deal. It's, very, it's, it's exactly what the camera bump on the 1520 looks like. Um, it's going to look like that, and, but be a five-inch screen. Not not whatever that one was four five or four seven whatever. Let's see what happens with that. So Paul, I want to uh, ask you about your new internet service. You left yeah. FiOS. I mean that's yep. insanity. I know nobody leaves FiOS. People <laughs> I are begging. I mean there are people probably thinking like, don't doesn't Paul know that I want? And people are just begging to yep. get FiOS, and I you're know. just I don't I want know. it. So here's what's happened with FiOS over the years. Um, you know, first of all, the service is rock solid. It's great. Um, we had the 50 megabit service, so it was like 50, 50 down, 18 up, I think. Um, but the prices go up over time. <laughs> Slayer and, and I chat um, and goes, he did what? Yeah, hold on, because this is this is crazy. And we have, um, well, well, everyone but me is on Verizon for for mobile phones, um, and I don't think we were we were never able to combine them into a single bill because the phones were on my wife's name and the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had the something. same problem. This is so ridiculous. But between the two phone lines, which we have, um, the cable TV and all that stuff, and the internet, I mean, our bill was astronomical. My wife does the stuff. My wife pays the bills and all that, so I don't actually know how much it was. But um, everything the same. Two phone lines. Uh, it's 50 megabit down, although we actually get 60 for whatever reason, um, and 11 up, so not 18. Um, it's all the same pa you know, packages on the TV and all that. Um, we're saving one hundred and fifty dollars a month. A month. Now for two years, wow. and so what? What I've learned in doing this is that there are people who typically you get like a one-year deal, and there are people who every year just switch back to FiOS or back to Comcast, depending on the year. Um, we got a we got a two-year deal because they're going after FiOS customers, and I you know I don't know how true this is, but apparently they've converted everybody on the street from FiOS to. Um, Oh yeah, they're offering like crazy stuff. Like you're getting a crazy, th like three hundred dollar Visa gift cards, and yeah. you know a lot so, of tablets. I w <laughs> did you get the weird. tablet? Like, did you get the uh, the no, Samsung no, 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 tablet? No, no, I don't get that. no. So this was supposed to happen back in November, and I think the, the first guy that showed up at the house didn't have the full understanding of what he was putting in. We were actually, and actually, I should say, for the hundred fifty dollars savings, we're also getting a second TV with a recording added to the house. Yeah. So it, it's a substantial savings. And Now, before you, jump, before you jump back to Time Warner, did you call Verizon and tell them, you know, hey, listen, this no. is what Time Warner... Because I do that every year. My wife has done a really good job at Files of getting stuff. I mean, we've been trying to do things like, um, for example, why don't we just use v, you know, voice over IP for phone kind of thing? And uh, they really didn't want us to change... Um, anything. It would just it just worked out like if we went to VoIP for the phones, it was going to be more expensive. It was really just kind of silly. And um, when the first guy showed up to do the install, he only had he didn't he's like I don't have this second. They didn't say he had two phone lines, and I was like, you know what? Forget it. 
I'm not going to do this until everything can be done. Don't worry about it. I couldn't care less if this happens. Um, you know, you know, I think he was a little overwhelmed. And so I'm thinking, like, I, I'm naturally nervous about this. This is a big switch. Right? Sure, This yeah. is scary. And um, so we rescheduled it for early December. I, I want to say it was probably last Wednesday. And so this time, two guys showed up. And, I, and I'm like, oh, here we go. This is everything's going to come crashing down. And I have to say, by the time they're out here, you know, they hooked up the second line. They did the wireless, everything, you know, it were it, it was everything was up and running. It was, it was everything was fine. It took us a couple of days on like some of the pay channel stuff. Like they didn't have all the right channels on. And you just kind of call them and you're like, what did they tell you you had? And you tell them and they turn it on. And it was crazy. Like, OK, fine. But the one thing that was really messed up, horribly messed up, was the Wi-Fi. And I called them within the first 24 hours five times. And, um, you know, my kids came home from school. They got their devices online. If you, think, you don't really think about this, but I have, mul- I mean, many devices, just myself. Xboxes, Roku, Apple TV, the connected TV itself, um, my kids' laptops, my kids' phones, my kids' tablets, I, my wife's, uh, everything. If you think about it. Probably like 30, I, 40 devices. devices. Yeah. Yes. It's crazy. So the first time I called, they said, uh, oh, you know, there's a mode on the modem and uh, on the router with the switch or whatever it is. And uh, it's, it's, it's crashes if you put too many devices. So I can, I can switch the mode over so it can handle more devices. And I'm thinking, like, what kind of a rinky-dink, you know, <laughs> thing is this? Why wouldn't it be turned on automatically? But, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. So, I mean, typical American household. I mean, come on, really? But nothing would work. My kid's down in the cellar playing Xbox over Wi-Fi. My wife's up in her office in the corner house over Wi-Fi. Can't connect. It connects, but it never works goes down all the time. I'm running like these speed test apps all the time on, on Wi-Fi connected devices. It's a horrible disaster. And I'm thinking, here we go. I'm like, we're going to have to go back. Like, this is, we need this stuff to work. Like, this is ridiculous. And I called multiple times. So they scheduled a guy to come out. He came out on Friday. He comes in, blah, blah, blah. He's doing all this stuff. You know, everyone who comes to my office is like, what the hell? What are you doing in here? Like, what is all this stuff? Like, everyone is, you know, like, what do you do for a living? What is this? It's crazy. And this guy comes in and he's like, okay. He's like, what's going on in here? What do you do? He goes, what do you do for a living? I'm like, yeah. And he goes, how many devices do you have in here? And I'm like, I don't know, 27, 30, what? I don't know. He goes, okay, hold on a second. And he goes out to the truck. He comes back with a different router. This is a little bit of advice for people who have Comcast, by the way. They have two routers. They look almost identical. They're you're, not identical. Your Time Warner or your Comcast now? This is Comcast. Oh, you're it's on family. Comcast. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't remember the model of the one that I got. It's like IME or IMS or something like that. This thing blows Wi-Fi signal out like it's a nuclear attack. <laughs> it's, I'm pretty sure I have cancer now because it's like right next to me. I'm never going to have children again. But, you know, as soon as he hooked this thing up and ever it's been now it's only been four or five days, whatever. It's just like it was on Fios. Like the Wi-Fi works in the far corner of the yard. I think my neighbors could use it. It's like, it's just blowing Wi-Fi signal. It's crazy, and um, it works great. So, wired. I'm getting you know sixty down, eleven, twelve up. I mean that's not thing. bad. That, that I mean, for the upload, yeah. that's not awful. I mean we have. Uh, one of the lines we have here is one fifty by seventy five, and the other one is fifty by fifty. But for most people, I mean, they don't need 50 megabits upload. Right. Right. And that was the thing. Like, I thought, you know, um, this could be a problem for the podcast, maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Like, I'm not sure what the line is. But it's 150 bucks a month. Like, it's $150 a that's month. That's a lot of money. It's not $50 yeah. a month, right? That, no, that, that's, that's a lot it's of money. It's $150 a month. So I felt like... This is worth going through a little pain if we can, you know, we'll see. And, you know, like, you know, if it doesn't work out, we can always go back, whatever. But um, I think it's going to work. I, I mean, what so I do, I do the same thing. I'll call them up every, I, pretty much like every year and a half, I'll call them up and be like, listen, I'm paying way too much for this thing. Because my bill comes out to like $300 a month. Like, it's crazy. Yes. And I got TVs and I got a TV downstairs. I got one, two, three, four, five. I have six cable boxes and six TVs. <laughs> Jeez. So I'll call them up and I'm like, listen, this is absurd. I'm just, I'm not even going to the cape, to the other oh. company. I'm just canceling everything. And they'll go, okay, hold on. We can't do anything. And then once you call like the retention department, they're like, okay, what do we have to do to keep you? Yep. Okay. We're going to cut, so, we're going to cut $20 way, I, from this, $30 from In a year from that. or two years, maybe I go back to class. I don't know. 
Yeah, but y- y- uh, here's the thing that bothers me about them. They have scammed everybody into buying these triple plays. And here, <laughs> like, they, oh. they, you think you're getting a good deal by getting a triple play, but in, it's not getting a good deal. It's a punishment if you don't get a but triple play. Anyone who's <laughs> been listening to us to have, talk about Fios over the past couple of years, I've always complained about the set-top box and how terrible Disgusting. it is. Disgusting, yeah. Roller thing. yeah. You know what? I, so... I guess the way Xfinity works is you get this basic recorder. You know, it's good. And it seems to have a lot more storage on it, by the way. We've set up all our recordings, and I keep kind of looking at it. And it's clearly the the hard drive is much bigger than what was on the Fios box. But I, I got the Fios box back when they first offered the service in Massachusetts many years ago. So I'm sure they have improved versions of it. But um, the set-top box that you get with Xfinity, the default one, the recorder, is a million times nicer. It, it is already much nicer. The only thing I don't like about it is when you're watching TV with uh, FiOS, the, the way the remote worked, if you were watching a recorded show, you hit a uh, commercial, you could kind of fast forward. You would hit the fast forward button like one, two, three, four, five times, and it would jump forward in blocks of time. And the way that this one works is you hit it and it fast forwards in different speeds. So you actually have to watch to see when the show comes back and it hit the button really quick. Um, and I'm hoping there's a mode or something I can fix that with. It's too bad. But um, but honestly, the quality of the picture is, is gorgeous. Uh, they're also on, they use fiber now. Um, you can apparently upgrade the boxes. You, I guess you get on a list and they have these new Xfinity boxes that are even better. But um, honestly, the default cable box is way better it's way better than the files one apparently um, there's so, a new files cable box too new yeah no, that doesn't cable. right and why would i get that as long-term yeah. overspending loyal customer you know why would they yeah why, why would they approach you with that yeah 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 no they would never why well, why would you let's see they're um, oh they're not uh motorola anymore yeah what are they they're cisco 30 seconds <laughs> someone on twitter just helped hit me up with 30 seconds skip on the comcast like so um that's not the exact box I have, but I bet that will work. I guess um, it, it, yeah, it looks I, I identical be, to yeah. the other one. I figured there'd be a way to make this happen. I mean, why why does it have to be so bad? But but here's the thing. Here's my point with this. So we, we don't need stars. Like, I don't care for stars. I don't care for Encore. I don't want any of that. Sure. If you, you know cut what? those, they charge you more. I know. Well, that was always the problem on Fios. And so um, we would go to Fios and say, hey... Um, you know, we don't want uh, HBO anymore or whatever it was. Like, we'd turn, try to turn it off between shows or something. And they'd be like, yeah, you know, how about if you keep HBO and we knock 30 bucks off your bill or whatever? And be like, okay. And they're like, oh, and you have stars and Showtime and Cinemax too. You know, that kind of, it was very strange. And so, um, but the thing is, like, over time, for whatever reason, it kind of, again, I don't do the bill, so I don't, I don't actually see it. My wife would just kind of come down and be like, yeah, this, this finals bill is really expensive. And I'd be like, well, I, I need it for work. I mean, I don't, what do you want me to say? It's, it's I should start expensing insane. it. No, you you really should. I know it, it's crazy, and and I'm I'm in the position where nobody nobody in the house watches. My wife and I do not watch cable television anymore. She she'll DVR something, and we have you know we we watch Scandal. We'll watch yes. The Good Wife. By the way, that is a fantastic show, The Good yeah, One. I've heard that from many people. I've not oh, watched my, it yet. It is such a good, and it's a well, smart show. Well, we've been watching um, uh, Alpha House, that show that's on Amazon, is fantastic. Or House of Cards, which is coming back. House of Cards is amazing. But most um, of our shows, I mean, it's available. It's out there. Yeah. Yep. Maybe there's a couple, like, you know, some shows on HBO and some shows on Showtime that I watch. I like, I like Shameless. I like uh, Homeland. Those are the shows that... Really, I can't get if I don't have a cable box. But is it worth it? I mean, really, like, is it worth three hundred dollars a month to get all this nonsense for literally one hour a day? I don't think so. <laughs> I mean, well, it doesn't. It doesn't really make sense at that point. So I'm actually looking for ways to eliminate cable totally well, by the next way, year. You know, I, this is some years away from happening. But I mean, if my kids were out of the house. Um, you would not get. You would not have it. I think we would cancel it. I. I, I um, but do they watch TV? Oh yes. Like like network yeah. television. Like they're watching TV. TV. Yeah, they watch. It's funny. You know, some of it's embarrassing. I mean, the kids watch. They record things like The Simpsons, which I think is everyone universally likes and all that stuff. Um, they're getting older, and so the the, the shows that we kind of watch together, like we watch The Walking Dead together, is a big family kind of event now. 
Um, but they watch, yeah, they watch a lot of the reality singing shows type stuff. They watch um, like Pawn Stars or whatever, which is actually for scripted reality. But I mean, I mean, do they like it or do they watch it because it's on? I, I don't know. You know <laughs> what I mean? It. Like, I mean, they were, they record it. Oh, they're recording this is it. Stuff okay. they record. So, um, a lot of cable is this kind of thing. Like, Stephanie and I will be going out for dinner on a Friday night. Kids are home. And we'll we'll say okay, so we're, we'll get pizza delivery for you guys because we know you like that kind of stuff, and you can rent a movie on on, on demand, you know, and and for the kids like that's a big night, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and it's I, I, yes they could do that on Apple TV or Roku or whatever, but um, I don't know, like yeah they do they they use it. Um, if anything, I mean I, part of the problem is you know on the Files box they were filling up the recorder and so. You, and I would really monitor it and, and make sure that their shows were not at the top of the list and were not too many episodes and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, they, if you looked at whatever was on that DVR, there were a couple of shows that my wife and I would watch um, that were being recorded. Not too many. You know, we watched like House Hunter type shows or um, no, there's not too many, you know, the, the Bill Maher show or whatever on HBO. Um, and then it's all their junk. Yeah. You yeah. Know? And it's. And so when you go to the DVR, it's like crap, crap, crap. One show for us, crap, crap, crap. You know, it, it, and um, I think one of the goals moving forward is to get them on maybe a second TV, not in their bedroom, which I wouldn't do, but maybe in, we have like a, a, a half finished uh, cellar they could be in. So I was talking to Jess. I'm like, you know, we're paying three hundred dollars a month for you to record the Real Housewives of you know Orange County. Over and oh, yeah. over and over again. I mean, oh, yeah. really, my DVR is if filled. If only there was some other way to get this content. <laughs> yeah. My yeah. DVR is just filled with the real housewives of whatever very wealthy city or town. My, That's uh, all it is. My, my daughter had a friend sleep over on Saturday. And the, the friend's mother called too late, I think maybe even Sunday morning, and said, you know, my daughter and her friend are into this band called One Direction, which okay. I always call One Dimension. Yeah, okay. And... Uh, <laughs> so I guess they were on SNL and um, I said, well, you know, we have all these services. I'll find it, you know? And so I looked on Apple TV. I looked on Amazon. I looked on some, whatever, some number of services, whatever it was. I could not find this episode and it looked like either they had SNL stuff that was like compilations or the most recent episode was not available the next day. Like it's something maybe they put I mean, on. It, a doesn't of Hulu do it like the following day? Hulu does it, and yeah. so uh, Hulu we we have not you know, we don't subscribe to anymore. So I actually had to sign up for Hulu. They have a, like a fourteen day free thing, whatever. Uh, I actually got this going for my daughter, and then I took like, I spent like forty five minutes on this, doing trying looking for it, and then figuring out Hulu was the only way to get it. Hulu has commercials. <laughs> what the? Oh God! Like real commercials? You're not talking about like yes, pre roll and. and- the first one came on, and I said, "Oh, I said Kelly, don't worry about this. this is, SNL does these fake ads. It's it's." Probably really fun. <laughs> and I'm sitting there watching it with her, and I'm like, uh, "No, it's not nope, a fake ad. That's it's an a, ad. It's literally like commercial breaks, and then there's so mid roll. You pay for a service <laughs> that then shows you commercials, huh? So we're not going to be keeping Hulu Plus. No, I mean, there's really no good content on there either. I mean, there's some stuff, but in the long run, I have no idea. I couldn't care less. I mean, there's really uh, not much. I I saw that and I was like, nope. And by the way, this is not a huge deal, but there's also something screwy going on with on demand. One one of the things I always hated about um, FiOS on demand was you would miss a show like Homeland or something. So the next day, you could watch Homeland on on demand. Okay, cool. But when you're in on demand, you don't have the full facility of all of the different remote control options. I, you can't fast forward 8x. You can only go forward 2x, that kind of thing. Well, some you shows can't, you can't even. You can't fast forward or rewind. And, ABC, and ABC they show ads on the front of it Yeah, for other Showtime shows. Guys, I'm already subscribed to Showtime. So I get it. There's no reason for you to sell me Showtime. I, I pay for it. So I've al- I always found that thing kind of aggravating. And so we got this new um, box. They were, we were supposed to get Showtime as part of it. It wasn't on there. Cinemax and Showtime somehow didn't make the cut. Um, my wife ended up calling on Monday. They turned them on fine. 
it was funny because when she called, the guy said, oh, you didn't miss Showtime or um, Homeland, did you? And she's like, actually, that's the reason I'm calling. We did miss Showtime, uh, Homeland. So on Monday night, we watched home, the, the Sunday night episode of Homeland, which we had missed. And so this is my first time using On Demand on the new box. Same thing. There was no ad on the beginning of it, but you can, you can step through it at 2x. That's the fastest speed you can go. So in the beginning, they, of course, show something where it's like previously on Homeland, which I don't need because we've been watching it. I want to skip through it. 2x. That's the fastest you can go. What, why Awful. would they limit you on, on demand? Why would they do that? Why would they do that? Oh, because I don't know. I mean, they just want to screw with you. They suck. I mean, it, it, it's, <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah. I mean, that, that's makes, really what it, it is. It makes me want to torrent it. It's like Usenet, Paul. I'm paying for the service. Why can't I just watch the show? I mean, why? Why, why would you? Limited. Well, in well, some, it how, how about the fact that a lot of shows are not on demand, and I don't understand why. Like, I don't oh, understand how yeah. they pick certain shows to be on demand. And now, what they're doing with certain shows, they won't update it for three weeks, depending on what yeah. the show is. So, like The Simpsons, for example, I like The Simpsons. So, for the first three weeks of the season, they weren't like putting it on yeah. demand because they want you to watch it live. Yep. I'm thinking that's so absurd. Well, that's pay TV. I mean, I'm sorry. That's uh, normal TV. And so they have advertisers and whatever. I, 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 I'm not saying it's okay. I, I'm, I guess what I'm saying is I sort of get it. The problem is I have I've, – I've only used On Demand for things like pay TV. So I miss the Bill Maher show. We watch it on On Demand. Or I miss uh, Homeland like I just described. We watch it on On Demand. Guys. <laughs> like, let, why can't I control the playback of this in all of the ways that I can? Is Paul, it, you if cannot control up, anything. Yeah. Nothing could, is in your control. I'm sorry, that's well, crazy. Well, how about the fact that some shows are only on SD and not HD on demand? Uh, you know? I'm not, have I seen that? Actually, I think I did on Fios one time. Yeah. No, there's a ton of shows. A ton yep. of shows. Just SD. They don't even offer you HD. Uh, yeah. Why would I want to watch it in HD? Yeah, why? You're paying. I mean, it's not like you're paying for it's it like or anything. For it. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's crazy. I, so I don't know. Yeah, I, it's baffling. It, it, it's weird to me that people would, or you know, a company would charge you for a service and then give you like a lackluster experience. Like it, it, it seems like it, it should be. If anything, it should be better. You know, there should be an advantage to watching it on demand. Um, because you know you're paying for it, but yeah, ugh. Now, Not now, now, now! I need to go drink some more. I'm all out. Nothing left. All right, Paul. Let's wrap it up. Uh, go to our website gfknetwork.com. Uh, if you want to subscribe to us, I encourage you guys to subscribe to the show. Also, if you're doing your holiday shopping, use our Amazon affiliate link. You can do that by going to gfq.co/amazon. That's gfq.co/amazon. Or if you're on our website, you can click on that little Amazon button on the side, and it'll just take you right to Amazon. We got a tiny little portion from every sale, and it helps us out. It's like a little tip you're giving us. A couple cents here and there. It goes a long way. Uh, Winsuperside.com for all things Paul Therat. Uh, I know you've been busy the last couple of days. Anything coming up? <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know. I mean, I've been working on the book stuff a lot. I've got, um, obviously, the Windows 8 one book, but I'm, I'm doing an update to the Xbox music book. I actually spent way too much time on that today. Uh, and then the Windows phone book as well. So. And people could buy your book. Yeah. How, can, how can people buy your book? <laughs> Tell us. Uh, they can go to, yes, <laughs> um, go to windows81book.com and you can yeah, pay for it on uh, PayPal or Amazon payments if you would like keep my family out of the street i mean paul's having to cut his cable bill just help yeah, him out. yeah exactly just, just yeah. give him a tip yeah. I these devices the book. don't pay for themselves andrew That's no they saying. do not i'll tell you that uh i bought it i i bought the book thing i get i paid 20 bucks for it wow i tell you guys every week i think you guys should pay 20 dollars for the book also <laughs> well <laughs> i mean I, you know obviously we let people we will let people pick their price and so forth if you don't want to pay for it you don't have to i mean Eventually, we'll put it on uh, Kindle and Nook. And I mean, hopefully, there'll be like a whole series of these things. I'd like to do books about Outlook.com and Office 365 and even Xbox One. I mean, I'd like to uh, just really kind of rethink the whole publishing thing. So, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Uh, also, Paul does a phenomenal show called Windows Weekly on the Twit Network. 
Go to twit.tv every Thursday at 2 p.m. East. Uh, you can check it out there. And uh, that's it, guys. We're going to see you next week. Next week, we're doing a call-in show. So we're going to have right. a phone number. We're going to post it before. Uh, and you guys could call in and, you know, talk to us. Is it going to be one of those 900 numbers? It's going to be a 1-900 number. We're going to charge you <laughs> 65 cents a minute. Uh, but the first minute is free. So you could just talk to us for a minute. But after that, we're going to have to charge you a credit card company. Uh, no Amex, by the way. We don't take Amex. Uh, by the way, if, if for people that take everything I say literally, that is a joke. Let me just say that. Because <laughs> I'm going to get, I, I guarantee you, I'm going to wake up Wednesday morning to an email. Was that serious or were you joking about charging us to call you? Well, it is a joke. Uh, we'll see you all next week, guys. Uh, take care.